So the trail that we're walking on right now is the Alakahakai Trail. When I walk this path along the way to Kuomo'o, it's such a peaceful place. It really invokes a sense of calm and tranquility inside of me that I, I almost can't even imagine that it was a path that was used during a battle. On Kailua Bay, inside Ahu in the Heo, our Ali'i Amoku, King Kamehameha, breathed his last. In life, Kamehameha achieved what no man could. He united all of the warring islands of Hawaii and became our first king. Kamehameha's death would set off a chain of events that would lead to the greatest tragedy to ever occur on the island of Hawaii. A battle that would pit rival chiefs against one another at a place called Kuamo. In our language, Kuamo means spine or backbone. At the time of Kamehameha's death, the backbone of our society was a set of social and political laws called kapu. It's really what regulated everyday life in Hawaiian society. Everything from fishing practices to farming and to how they ate with each other. It really was something that was foundational to Hawaiian culture. Kapu brought order to our society. Breaking kapu often meant severe punishments, sometimes even death. By the 1800s, kapu was still practiced, but there was growing uncertainty whether it should continue. Ever since Captain Cook arrived at Kealakikua Bay in 1779, foreign ships and their visitors had become commonplace. Christian missionaries preaching a new faith would soon be on shore. And I can only imagine what it was like for Hawaiians to see these people come in with their own religious system, who didn't believe in the kapu system, who were breaking kapu every time that they would come here and not following their rules. and that these people were not getting punished. One of those questioning the kapu system was the new king himself. Liholiho was the son of Kamehameha. The kapu system forbade men from eating with women. But at Ahuenaheo, Liholiho did just that. It is said that the new king entered the hale of the women, eating a meal and join them. So when Liho Liho ate with the women, he was breaking this ai kapu, which was the, which was the kapu that gave the gods their status. So he was basically symbolically overthrowing the gods. I can only imagine that it was maybe a time of confusion and a time of anger, that they had to really question what was real and what, how they were gonna live their lives from this point forward. Perhaps the most angry was Liholiho's cousin, Kekua Okalani. Before his death, Kamehameha had given Kekua Okalani stewardship of our war god, Ku Kailimoku. Kekua Okalani demanded that the kapu system be maintained. When Liholiho refused, Kekuo Kualani began to amass a force that would challenge the breaking of the kapu. A lot of people in that area who supported Kekuo Kualani and who wanted to keep the kapu system, all these people joined together and were willing to fight to the death to preserve their religious system. Liho Liho responded by sending his prime minister, Kalani Moku, to subdue Kekuo Kualani. 
the Ala Kahakai Trail, our pathway of peace and commerce, would now be a trail to war. So we have Kalani Moku and Liholiho's forces moving south. And they have a lot of weapons, a lot of guns, and a lot of people. And then we have Kekuo Kalani's forces coming from the south, coming up north, with fewer people and fewer guns. And it was here at Kuomo'o that they really engaged in battle. Kekuo Kalani and his warriors have early success. But they are outnumbered by the king's army of 1,500 warriors. So you can see how rough the terrain is in this area. And you can imagine these two sides coming together over this rough terrain with guns and with spears and battling hand to hand. If you think about it, you can just hear the sound of the gunshots and smell the gunpowder and imagine how fierce of a fight it was up in this area. This heiau here is it's really a symbol of what Kekuo Kalani and his side of the, of the battle were fighting for. To retain these ways and honoring the gods. Fighting alongside Kekuo Kalani is his wife, the chiefess Manono. A musket is fired at Kikuo Kalani, striking him in the chest. Manono rushes to his side, but she too is struck. It is said that as she lay dying in the carnage, Manono uttered, Malama ko aloha. Keep your love. Manono's words are words that resonate. I definitely think that Manono's words are words that transcend time and really apply to our lives today. In the end, Liho Liho's royal forces are victorious. However, there are no winners at Kuomo. Hundreds of Hawaiians were killed that day. Most were buried amongst the lava rocks where they remain to this day. After the battle, the worship of our traditional gods went underground, and the ki'i representing those gods destroyed. The kapu system that Kekuo Okalani and Manono died defending was no more. Three months after the battle, the first missionaries arrived. Our traditional beliefs gave way to new ones. But the beliefs that so many Hawaiians died defending did not perish that day at Kuomo'o. 200 years after the final shot was fired, the mana here lives on. Today, the nonprofit Aloha Kua Mo'o Aina cares for this sacred land. It is our dream that this place of conflict and tragedy becomes a place of peace and reconciliation. We can learn a lot from the stories that have occurred in this place by restoring it and bringing people here and sharing this place with people. We're really sharing Manono's message of aloha. By restoring Kuomo'o and sharing these stories, we're really moving forward to heal this place, to heal our culture, and to heal ourselves. <laughs>